Sam, can you uh, see my screen? Yeah, you can see it. Perfect. Okay, thanks everybody. So, welcome to the Pro Strategy December uh, Power BI webinar. And one of the things we want to talk to you today is it's really about setting your business up for success with Power BI. And in many respects, some of the topics we're going to cover are not really Power BI specific per se, but it's really about best practices um, that you should really consider applying no matter what tool you use. Um, but then, you know, as we, as we go through it, we will start to look at maybe some Power BI architectures that you can apply in a business. And also, you know, we're going to put a bit of focus on things like the data model and the importance of that, and then see, you know, what it means when you have a good data model and how quickly you can design and build uh, dashboards um, on that particular data model. I guess what we're not going to do today is get into, I suppose, a coding level of detail, you know, how to do formulas, um, you know, how to do more advanced visuals and that type of thing. But what we will be doing in 2019 is teeing up a series of webinars where we will start to get into that lower level of detail around maybe connecting to social web sources, um, you know, cleansing data, modeling, um, you know, adding history, the types of everyday problems that people have, and then also starting to use some of the newer, more sophisticated features, the artificial intelligence. You know, there's a brand new piece of capability coming out in the new year where um, the AI uh, that typically was Azure machine learning is being built into Power BI. That's going to be massively powerful, but it's also going to take time to kind of really think about it and how best to use it as well. So let me just introduce ProStrategy first of all. Uh, many of you on the call will know, will know us, uh, some of you may not. So, you know, we uh, have been around for over 30 uh, years. You know, there's two sides to our business, uh, BI and analytics, and I'm the, the practice lead in that particular space. We also have CRM and ERP division uh, with heavy specialization on Microsoft. So these would be things like AX, um, Dynamics, and also um, Microsoft CRM. And the fact that we work very closely together for many of our customers is very advantageous because, you know, not alone do we do something like a NAV, we can also go in and put the analytics on top of NAV. And that's been a very, very successful uh, aspect of the business recently, particularly with Power BI. You know, we're always investing, you know, in, in our own products, um, how we use them, you know, keeping our, par uh, keeping our customers up to date. And because we're working with people like Microsoft and IBM, they're investing in their products. So our customers are always getting the latest versions. Just the flavor of some of the customers we have, you know, from, from little to large, you know, some of the bigger ones where we have analytics deployments are, you know, places like Primark, which is, is almost as big as you get from an Irish perspective, you know, Unilever, um, you know, and a whole host of others um, that aren't even listed here as well. So in terms of Power BI, well, what is Power BI? Power BI, it's a Microsoft product. Look, and, and most of you are going to know this, right? You wouldn't be here if you didn't. Um, it's a Microsoft product. They're investing very, very heavily in this. And, you know, what we can see from the next slide is it's a leader in the, the Gartner quadrant and has been for a number of years. And some of the reasons for this are Microsoft are putting a lot into it. You know, they're, they're continually investing in the artificial uh, intelligence and the data science space. They're continually upgrading, you know, the visual capability. I mean, I would have said two years ago, Power BI was really, really strong and I was a fan of it. Um, Tableau probably had a lead on some of the visuals, but I think Microsoft has definitely caught up. Uh, however, what Power BI has that a lot of the others don't have is it has very, very strong data modeling, data loading, and data cleansing capability. And that's something we're going to look at a little bit today. And that's really important um, because it means it's a product that can really stand on its own two feet. Whereas if you look at some of the other products, you'll often find, you know, in, in larger enterprises where you have a Tableau deployment, people will buy Alteryx as well. In fact, they bundle them with each other. 
you know, because one can't do all of the things that you might need it to do as well. So if you're looking at, you know, a Power BI deployment, and to be fair, any deployment, what is the process that you should follow? And really what you want to get to at the start of it is, well, what are my requirements? What problem am I actually trying to solve? You know, it's, it's no good kind of just collecting data, um, building visuals, if, if there isn't some genuine application for that insight that you get at the end of it. Like it's great to play and learn tools and products, but ultimately, you know, we're all here because, you know, we're considering this from a business perspective. So this has to be about creating value, you know, either by finding opportunities to grow revenue, uh, create efficiency, improve productivity, uh, you know, improve uh, cash flow by reducing stock. There have to be very, very definitive problems that we're trying to solve because then it makes your analytics process much more focused and ultimately it would be much more successful as well. So the very important thing is to start right at the beginning and say, well, who are the people that I want to help? What are the problems they have and the challenges that they face in a day-to-day -day business um, that I can help them with by interviewing them, you know, understanding the data that's important to them, what gaps do they have in terms of data, um, and using that to feed into your design process. The very, very key thing about the design process is actually not so much the reports and dashboards. They are very important and they come later, but what's really important is getting your data model right. And that's something we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. Because um, ultimately, investing in the design, particularly around the data model, will ensure much greater success as you progress through your implementation effort. You know, the other thing is, you know, whether you partner with somebody like us or you, you do some of this internally, you know, building that data model and replaying it back to your internal customers or the people that you're working with, you know, it kind of, it helps you scope out the problem. It ensures you're not missing anything. Um, you know, and you can get your customers to sign off on it. And this is certainly the approach we would take. That's something, you know, where we would look for a sign off at this point in time, because as I said, it puts good scope on it. Um, and it, it's usually pretty clear what problems you're going to solve with the data models as well. You know, moving into the rest of it, well-defined design model means the build is easy because it's more of an execution phase. And then lastly, your reports and dashboards. Again, having a well-defined model means it's very fast and easy to build those reports and dashboards and ultimately publish them and roll them out to your audience. So let's, let's move into what it is I mean by having a well-defined data model. So if we look at this one here, this is a very simple sales you know, uh, data model. And this will be true for most businesses. You know, you're going to have a customer, um, a time or a date element, and a product. Okay. If you if this was in retail, you may not have a customer. You may have a store instead, um, where you don't have individual customers, but rather a store and a store manager and so on and so forth. But I think you'll take my point. Now, when you look at this, this is pretty simple. You know, from a sales perspective or a measures perspective, you've got things like sales value, units, cost, having sales and cost means you can calculate margin. And with this model, I can measure the product, you know, the performance of a product over time from a margin and a revenue perspective. I can look at my customers. I can look at, um, you know, I can look at which customers are growing, which customers are not growing. In fact, which customers am I at a risk of losing? So this very, very simple model allows you analyze the sales of your business in a variety and from a variety of different perspectives. You know, your top customers, your bottom customers, um, new customers, lost customers. So, you know, there's an old adage, it's a lot easier to retain customers than acquire new ones. But with this type of model and ultimately visuals on top of it, this can give you insight into where you're possibly at risk of losing a customer so you don't lose them. Um, moving on, right? 
with something like Power BI, and now we're going to get into the specifics of Power BI just a little bit, there's a fabulous uh, functionality in Power BI called Time Intelligence, and this allows us to extend our models. So again, taking the simple model that we had a minute ago, now I can add all of these great measures like year to date, year to date last year, um, month to date, so on and so forth, and I can start to do year over year compares. And this all becomes drag and drop. I can go in, I can start building a report or a dashboard, and I can look at customers, uh, year to date growth, add in um, budgets or goals, and I can do the same thing. So from that simple model we had a minute ago, I've now extended it through time intelligence and added tremendous capability um, to the level of insight I can gain into my business. So what I want to do briefly before we get to, to Sam, who's going to you know, demo how you could use a simple model like this and the power of the model, um, I want to talk a little bit about you know, a Power BI architecture. This is the one I'm not going to talk about. Okay, This is a full-blown enterprise architecture. And this is really to show that um, this can be as simplex or as complex as you need it to be. And in this case, you know, it's a full-blown one. But what I'm going to do is start with a very simple one. Okay, So if we start with something like a desktop architecture, I have my Power BI desktop, which is free to download. I can connect it to a variety of data sources, you know, a SQL or Oracle database, on-prem or in the cloud, it doesn't really matter. Um, maybe Excel, CSVs, uh, text files, maybe a cloud source like salesforce.com. This could just as easily be Microsoft, CRM, Facebook, TripAdvisor, you name it. There's APIs for all of those. You know, the first thing I'm going to do is start to load up my data and, and start to have a look at it. The key thing then is you need to cleanse your data. And this is often something that gets overlooked when people kind of try and take a quick and dirty approach to, you know, to building a solution. And that's okay for doing a proof of concept, but we're talking about building an enterprise or a business solution here. So this isn't something that want, you want to underestimate. Really, really important. And there's great capability within Power BI to do that scrubbing. Next, we get to the data modeling piece. So what are the key fact tables I have? What are the key dimensions I want to use? building out all of that within Power BI and crea creating the relationships between them so you can start to drive relationships between sales, between purchases, between budget, and start to bring all that information together so it's uh, really usable. Lastly, you get into the visuals, so building your reports and dashboards. And this is where you get to you know, play around, have a little bit of fun with the data, look at the interactions. But ultimately, what's really important here is you take a persona-driven approach. So this is where, you know, as part of the requirements we talked about earlier, you decide, well, who's important in my, not, not who's important, but what are the different roles or profiles of people within my business function that I'm trying to solve for? So for example, a sales rep will only need to see a certain amount of sales data, um, will only need to see an amount of, um, you know, they probably only need to see their own customers, maybe against goal, like sales are, typically sales are motivated by the current quarter or the period that they're working in. They're motivated by what opportunities they're going to close that is going to get them to their goal and the attainment or compensation they've earned on the, the business that they've closed. So what they need tends to be very simple versus a manager or an operations person, they're going to want to see a lot more. They're going to be more interested maybe in margin. They're going to be more interested in the coverage or the forecasting ability of the business as a whole, not at an individual level, and also starting to maybe build in hedging and take into account uh, risk factors and, and stuff like that as well. So understanding all of these different personas is really important so that when you build your dashboards, you give an experience that's bespoke and relevant to the particular role. Once you're done with that, you can publish. Lastly, you know, the simple architecture just following on once you've published, this is what it looks like. You've got a little uh, Power BI gateway that creates a secure connection between your uh, data sources and your Power BI service. That updates, you know, it can be either real time pass through or updating, loading data up to eight times a day and then publishing it out to all of your users. So it's nice, it's clean, it's simple and a great way to get started. You know, and, and as I said earlier, looking back at this, Anyone can download that Power BI desktop. It's free and you can just get started. 
once you start publishing data, you know, you start to get into licensing. And this is really important because, you know, you're applying security, you're starting to use this to drive efficiency within your business. So it's important that you, you architect this well and you take the right approach. In terms of an enterprise architecture, this is really a step up from the last one. It's a little bit heavier. And what we're doing here is maybe you've got a database in the middle of a data warehouse where you're ingesting data from multiple sources. You're doing your modeling here. Um, maybe you're using something like analysis services. So this is, this is really only where your data volumes are getting big. You know, so if it's more than a gigabyte um, or 10 gigabytes per user, and that's a lot of information, you need to start to move to this type of model. Or for example, you know, we have customers who are in the retail space, and we do a lot of basket anal analytics for them, um, where you're starting to look at, you know, you know, close to real time, what people are buying, promotions, upsell and cross sell opportunities. And that's where you start to need some of these other, you know, uh, more enterprise um, types of setups to, to drive that. But again, it's the same Power BI experience, just sitting on um, a more, you know, a heavier enterprise architecture. So what I'd like to do now that we've covered, you know, maybe an approach, um, the importance of data models and how to look at, you know, some architectures, particularly how do you get started? I'm going to cut over to Sam and he's going to show you you know, what it means and how easy it is to build when you've got that well-defined model. So Sam, I think I need to make you a presenter. Yep. Thank you. I've probably gone past you now, haven't I? Sent a request for oh, yeah. my screen to be shared. Okay. Okay. So you're now the presenter, you can share. Yeah, can everybody see my screen? I can see it anyway, yeah. Okay. So, just leave this here. Okay, so as Owen was saying, I'm just gonna go through a kind of report with that model that he mentioned earlier regarding customer sales item and date. So I'm just gonna start with a simple cross tab. Uh, if I pull this in here, we're going to start to look at, first of all, your customer. Then we're going to go by year across the top. And we're going to look at those measures that Owen mentioned earlier, year to date and year near growth. And we'll just turn off the subtotals. So here you can look across the last four years of your business, five years of your business here. So we have 2013, 2017. Uh, and you can see the year to date sales at that time with that company, as well as the year and year growth as it goes along. Uh, if you want to see this in a bit more uh, visualized form, I can control C, copy it, pull it up to the top. And you can change your visualizations tab here. So I can change this to a column chart. Just do a small bit of editing here. So then you have your year to date sales by customer, just a bit more visual. And what can be done as well is if you want to see, for example, your top 10 customers, you could go to visual filters, top in, top 10, and pull in your year to date sales. Just to give you an idea of kind of who's performing the best, you might want to have it dif differentiated from the rest of the customers. Uh, and now what I can do as well is I can pull in another source, which is going to be an Excel file with the goals for each customer. So if I go up to get data, so what we're doing here is just while Sam is doing this, the, the, we've seen the data model there with, you know, customer date, item and sales, similar to the model we had, um, in the, um, the PowerPoint or the slides previously. Now, and that data is, for the purpose of this, let's assume that's coming from an ERP system, so something like Microsoft Dynamics. But now we want to pull in goal data, um, which we don't store in NAV, but we really want that to kind of add a little bit of uh, color to our uh, information. Okay, so now that I've 
got the option to pull an Excel file. It gives you a preview of what's in the Excel file. And it also gives you an option to edit it if there's any like dirty data in it or anything. Like for example, here there's a column four with null coming up. So if I can just go in here and go into edit, it brings up the query editor. And this is kind of where you can model your data and make sure everything in the data is correct. So I can just get rid of that column because we won't be needing it. Remove. And for you can say in like data types here. So goal and year to date sales will be. But you, you don't have year to date sales, though, Sam, do you? Uh, you you would initially, but um, it's just the goal and the customers there at the moment. So that table is pulled in now. It's called data, so you can rename this as goals. And when that table is pulled in, uh, Power BI sometimes can pick up the relationship as it has done here, but you want to check just in case it hasn't picked it up and then you can determine the relationship between it. Sam, can you just go into the, the, the relationship view there as well, just to show yeah. on the left hand side where people can see the relationships visually as well? Yeah, so the goal table now has been pulled in and it has that relationship with customer, which goes back to sales as well. So now if I want sorry, to- Sorry, Sam, just to, to re-emphasize. So everybody could see there that the model we saw there was very, very similar to what we used in the PowerPoint. And it allows you kind of look at it from all those perspectives, like your product, your customer, uh, or over time. Thanks, Sam. Okay, so now I can just pull in goal into this visualization. And then you have your year to date sales versus the goal. And another handy thing you can pull in as well is you can add a measure. So I'll just show you how to create a measure. And for this one, I just have it handy here. Just attainment, just to see how it's progressing. You have a percentage of the year to date against the goal that you have. And so that's how fast you can make a measure. And so if I just click in this measure, pull it into a line value. And it just shows you kind of the progress of your year-to-date sale versus the goal. Uh, this attainment as well can be pulled into this table as also. And it just kind of gives you an idea of where you're at and it gives you another view. Um, and a bit more simple now, there's scorecards that if you just want to see one value of your overall company, you can pull in your year-to-date sales here or you can pull in your month to date sales. And that just gives you a simple view. You just want to know the figure and it's up there at the top. No visualizations or anything. It's just the standard figure. There's also, I'll give you an example of a pie chart, for example, if you want to see how your products are performing. Uh, I'll go into item, category, have again your to date sales and that gives you the performance of your certain categories and the visualizations are simple to change you can just click on the pane and it changes it around also what is very handy in a lot of the reports is if you pull in for example a year filter and that allows you to select certain years. You can do single select, or for this example, I'm gonna do multi-select. So if you just wanna see 2016 and 2017, that filters everything down just to those years. And, and really so you can look if you clicked into capital all purpose, the customer, or even power tools, that will then limit the others as well, right? Yeah, so it's completely interactive. So for example, here, if I click power tool, that will show you the performance of power tool across the board and all the different visualizations. And again, for example, if I clicked here, you have capital all purpose and you can see their power tools and power tools accessory are their main products. And just to go in a bit more depth about if you want to spot trends or see if there's something going well or going wrong, you can go, you can add conditional formatting. 
So for example, I'll do year on year growth. So if I go to background color, advanced controls, I can format by rules. And if a value is less than zero for your year on year growth, you can make it red. And I'll do another one here. If a value say will say greater than 60%, I can make that green. And then you have your visuals here. So you can see that in green, you have the good performing uh, on year and year growth and then other poor ones in red. So it just kind of gives you a quick insight of what's going wrong, what's going right. Um, another thing as well that you can look at is if you are going, it's kind of a pivot table kind of functionality. So if I go to row headers, let's say, and I turn on plus minus icon and I'll pull in county for example and I'll pick mail it shows you it lets you kind of drill down to the individual company in each county and again you can see the performance indicators here as well um, and this can also be added to things such as uh, mapping so it is a good mapping functionality that I can show you here now. So if I pull in county, and I pull in year to date sales. So there's an outlier here. And so if you have the right kind of address and the coordinates, you can get exactly where places are. And it just, it's a good kind of visualization to show if you're looking say across the board, the countrywide or even internationally you can see it on these maps and that's very good for for uh, visualization um so uh, what else is... you know, time check there i'd say we're, we're we're up on time so i need 30 seconds just to wrap so do you want to just show me the front page of a pre-built one yeah so this was kind of just a quick one that we could do just show how easy it is so here's an example of our sales accelerator so it's a lot more high level it's kind of branded uh as, as you can see, it's a lot, it's interactive, just like the other one. Uh, there's also kind of drill through capabilities. So if I went on to a customer here, capital all purpose, drill through to a customer detail page, it links the pages up and it filters them down. Um, again, there's kind of another visualization option here with the toggle. So you can switch between your visuals and your detail. And then there's things like you can drill down, say if I wanted to see what's going on in 2017, I can drill down and that'll go into different quarters throughout the year. Uh, there's just one more thing with regarding uh, building, which would be the mobile view. So you can get a quick, it's simple to build. You just drag and drop where you want it to look like. And And it just, it, that's what it shows like in your mobile view. So as if this was a phone and that works with Android, iOS and Windows as well. Yeah, it looks, uh, on. it looks a little bit on the rough side when you in the designer, but it displays uh, very, very well on the, the mobile app itself. Um, Sam, do you want to make me presenter again or can I just present? No, I can, I can just do it. I think. Can I? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. So, um, Sam, thank you very much. I'm just going to see if I can get down onto my next one. Right. So, I have one or two questions that I'm going to ask. But you know, now that we've seen, um, you know, maybe what a process looks like, um, you know, talked about the importance of data modeling, uh, and then I think seen hopefully that demo kind of showed you, you know, how a very very simple model, once it's built and the data is clean can be used to do a, you know, a really broad and wide variety of, build a, a broad and wide variety of reports and dashboards and give you a tremendous amount of insight into your business. Um, you know, if this is something, we, we would encourage everyone to, to start looking at this themselves, download Power BI, but if you decide it's something you need help with, 
Um, what we often recommend to our customers is to start with this, an analytic solution in workshop where we, you know, we have a quick chat with you first, decide, you know, is it one day, two days, three days? Typically it's, you know, around the two day mark where we kind of help you figure out what your requirements are, what the scope of the solution is, move on to build an architecture, a roadmap, and come up with an estimate for you, which you could use to, you know, with, with us, preferably, or, you know, with anyone else, so you, should you so choose. But typically, you know, that, that is what you need to do to get started one way or the other. Um, and we'd be very happy to, you know, discuss your specific requirements. Now, I do have, uh, Timothy Murphy's asked me a question around, I'm just having a look at here, what tool do you suggest for report dashboard design? To be honest with you, Timothy, if your data, even if your data is, let's call it not cleaned, but you have it, you can start to mock stuff up in Power BI pretty quickly and get people to sign off on that. The other thing I do, and I know it's a little bit old fashioned, but it does tend to work very well, is I will start to mock it up in Excel, um, where you can mock up, you know, your column headings, your row headings, um, add in things like the drill downs, the filters, the limits that you want. And then you can simply, you know, share that with people, take them through what it is you're trying to achieve. And usually people will sign off on that. And you can always attach it into a Word document for, for people as well. But that, that tends to work pretty well. So do we have any other questions from anyone else? Uh, Timothy, are you happy with that answer? Or is there something else you were looking for? I've unmuted you at the moment. Is that noise? Uh... No, no, no. Okay. Um, does, does anybody have any questions at all that they'd like to ask at this point before we, before we wrap up? Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope you found that useful, and we'll be uh, scheduling more uh, in 2019. Thank you. Bye bye.